Want to speak real Norwegian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at NorwegianClass101.com. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder which is in the Dialogue Study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye. To master a new language and understand everything as soon as you hear it, to read with just a quick glance and speak smoothly without thinking, you need to review. Here are our top five review tactics. Number one, listen to examples over and over again. By listening closely and often, you start to pick up the rhythm of a language, as well as correct pronunciation from a native speaker. Use our line-by-line -line feature that lets you both listen and read along. Use this tool to practice as much as possible. Number two, use our voice recording tool to master perfect pronunciation. Record yourself and compare it against the native speaker. 
If you sound different, then repeat after the native speaker until you're able to match them. Use our voice recording feature, which makes recording super easy. Number three, master your recorded conversations. Record conversations and go over them again and again. Master entire conversations and repeat them line by line. Use any of the dialogues available for download on our website. These come with transcripts of the entire conversation. Number four, use mobile devices to reinforce previously learned conversations. Constant review is the best way to progress in your language studies. Download the recorded dialogue to your mobile device and incorporate it into your music playlist. Quick reviews throughout the day effectively reinforce what you've learned. Number five, read with line-by-line -line notes. Read along with a native speaker to really master pronunciation and natural intonation. You should start slow at first, then slowly increase your speed. Your pronunciation will become more natural. You will also see that your ability to understand fluent speakers will greatly increase. You'll be able to improve your communication skills using these five simple review techniques. Increase your understanding of your target language. And remember, if you're interested in getting all these review tools, sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start reviewing more every day. Hi everybody, Annette here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Norwegian questions. The question for this lesson is, how do I know which gender a noun is? A lot of people aren't sure how to tell which gender a noun is. Unfortunately, there are no rules to learn what gender the noun is without the article. So many people learn the nouns and articles together. Norwegian nouns are divided into three genders, masculine, feminine, and neuter. Let's go over each gender. First up, masculine nouns. Masculine nouns have the article en, which means a or an. Let's take the noun gutt, meaning boy, for example. En gutt, meaning a boy, is a singular indefinite noun. To make it a singular definite noun, you add the suffix en to gutt. Then you get gutten, meaning the boy. For the plural indefinite noun, you add ar and you get gutter, meaning boys. Finally, for the plural definite noun, you add ene and you get guttene, meaning the boys. Let's look at another example using the same order. En bil, bilen, biler, bilene. A car, the car, cars, the cars. Next, feminine nouns. Here, you use the article ei, meaning a or n for feminine nouns. Let's use the word dør, meaning door, as an example. For the singular indefinite form, you add the article ei. So, ei dør, means a door. For the singular definite form, you add the suffix a after dør. Then you get døra, meaning the door. In the plural indefinite form, you add er and get dører, meaning doors. Finally, in the plural definite form, you add ene and get dørene, meaning the doors. Not so bad, right? It's very similar to the conjugation of masculine nouns. Here's one more example. Ei bok, boka, bøker, bøkene. A book, the book, books, the books. Last, we have neuter nouns. Neuter nouns have the article et. Let's take the noun hus, meaning house. In the singular indefinite form, you just add et and get et hus, meaning a house. In the singular definite form, you add the suffix et and get huse, meaning the house. In the plural indefinite form, you generally don't need a suffix, but remember, some neutral nouns need the suffix ar. Hus doesn't, 
so you just say whose meaning houses. Finally, in the plural definite form, you add the suffix ene and get husene, meaning the houses. Let's do an example where you need the er suffix. Et vindu, vindue, vinduer, vinduene. A window, the window, windows, the windows. How was this lesson? Don't worry if you don't get it right away. Remember, practice makes perfect. And you can learn more about nouns at NorwegianClass101.com. Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Hade, vi ses snart. Bye, see you soon. Hi everybody, Annette here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Norwegian questions. The question for this lesson is, where do I place the verb in a sentence? When studying a new language, word order can be a bit confusing. However, Norwegian sentence structure isn't that hard when you know the main rules. Norwegian is written as SVO, subject, verb, object, just like English. Therefore, sentences start with a subject, then a verb in the middle, followed by an object. Let's do a simple sentence first. Jeg snakker norsk. This means I speak Norwegian. Here, jeg, I, comes first as the subject, followed by snakke, speak, the verb, and finishing with norsk, Norwegian, the object. However, there are some exceptions to this rule. Let's go over them together. First is when you want to add emphasis. This is called inversion. For example, if it is particularly chilly today, you may say det er kaldt i dag. It is cold today, instead of i dag er det kaldt. Today it is cold, to stress how cold it is. Second, you usually use inversion when you have two verbs in a sentence. Let's go back to our very first sentence, jeg kan snakke norsk. I can speak Norwegian. Let's change the sentence to include the word now. Jeg kan snakke norsk nå. I can speak Norwegian now. If we use inversion, the subject will come between the verbs, as in nå kan jeg snakke norsk. Now I can speak Norwegian. Last, when you make a yes or no question, you start with a verb. An example would be snakker du norsk, meaning do you speak Norwegian? But it literally means speak you Norwegian? That's it for this lesson. I hope that clears things up for you. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Hade, vi ses snart. Bye, see you soon. Want to speak real Norwegian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at NorwegianClass101.com. Hi everybody, Annette here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Norwegian questions. The question for this lesson is, how do we use S verbs in Norwegian? Verbs such as å møtes, meaning to meet, belong to a category of verbs known as S-verbs. Some people might wonder why we have an S at the end. Putting an S at the end of a verb gives the verb multiple definitions. These are reciprocal, passive, and non-passive. Let's do some examples so you can learn how to use S-verbs like å møtes correctly. Let's start with a reciprocal definition. You have probably heard når skal vi møtes, meaning when are we going to meet? Å møtes literally means to meet each other. It is used when we have two or more people involved in the sentence. Here's another example. De møttes i parken, which means they met each other in the park. Since S-verbs involve two or more people, it is very common to use them when you're planning to meet friends. Let's do an example with a passive sentence. Boka skal leveres i morgen. 
meaning the book shall be delivered tomorrow. Since the original object, the book, has become the subject, you use an S verb to make the sentence. S verbs in passive sentences are mostly used when giving instructions or when the subject is unknown or unnecessary. Last, let's go over some non-passive S verbs. These are used for feelings, emotions, and thoughts. For example, det føles rart å være hjemme igjen, which means it feels strange to be home again, or jeg er helt sikker på at det finnes liv på andre planeter, meaning I'm sure that life on other planets exists. And that's it for this lesson. I hoped it helped. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Ha det, vi ses senere. Bye, see you later. Hi everybody, Annette here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Norwegian questions. The question for this lesson is, when do I use the possessive pronoun seen? The Norwegian possessive pronoun system is a bit complicated, and it can be difficult to know when you should use seen instead of the possessive pronouns hans, meaning his, hennes, meaning hers, or deres, meaning theirs. Sin translates as his, hers, its, and theirs, so it's easy to get confused. Sin is the reflexive form of hans or hennes and deres. Sin is used for something that is one's own. In other words, when the subject owns the object. Let's have a look at an example. Ola vasker bilen sin. This literally means Ola washes his own car. If you change sin to hans, meaning his, the meaning of the sentence changes. For instance, Ola vasker bilen hans means Ola washes his car. This means that Ola is washing someone else's car, not his own. Let's have a look at two more examples. Han glemte sekken sin, literally meaning he forgot his own backpack. Here, the backpack that was lost belongs to the subject, so we need to use sin. In this sentence, han glemte sekken hans, or he forgot his backpack, it means he forgot someone else's backpack. Sin also conjugates in the gender and the plural of the noun. Sin is used for the masculine singular form, si is for the feminine singular form, sit is for the neutral singular form, and sine for the plural form. Let's see some examples with the conjugated forms of sin. Hun mistet sekken sin. She lost her own backpack. Sek, meaning backpack, is a masculine noun, therefore you use sin. Han mistet boka si. He lost his own book. Bok, meaning book, is feminine, so you have to use si. Han riddet huset sitt. He tidied his own house. Hus, meaning house, is a neuter noun, so you use sitt. And last, hun skal støvsuge alle teppene sine, meaning she is going to vacuum all her own carpets. Teppe, meaning carpet, is in the plural form, so you use sine. Before we close up this lesson, it's important to know that you can only use sin, si, sit, and sine with objects. You cannot use sin, si, sit, and sine with subjects. Here's an example. Sekken hans er gammel, meaning his backpack is old. In this sentence, the noun sek, meaning backpack, is the subject, so you can't use sin. And han glemte sekken sin, he forgot his backpack. In this case, the backpack is the object, so you use sin. And that's it for this lesson. I hope I helped clear things up for you. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Ha det, vi ses snart. Bye, see you soon. Hi everybody, Annette here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Norwegian questions. 
The question for this lesson is, why do I need to use reflexive pronouns with certain verbs? Let's start with a more specific question. Why do I need my in jeg vasker meg? My meaning myself is a reflexive pronoun and it can be difficult to know whether you need it after the verb or not because you may not need it in English. You use a reflexive pronoun when you perform an action upon yourself. In other words, when the subject performs an action on the object. Let's look at the different forms of reflexive pronouns and typical verbs that need them. Let's start with the example from the question. Jeg vasker meg. This means I wash myself. You need my, meaning myself, to explain that you are washing your own body. If you write the sentence without my, it will mean that you just wash something. Let's move on to the next example. Du kler på deg, meaning you dress yourself. Here, dai is the reflexive pronoun, and kle på needs a reflexive pronoun to show that you're dressing yourself and not anybody else. Here are some other examples. Hun grer seg, literally mean she combed herself. In this example, you don't need hår, meaning hair, because the verb å gre, meaning to comb, makes it obvious that we're talking about combing hair. Another example would be vi forlovet oss. Literally, we engaged ourselves. Dere bestemte dere for å kjøpe et hus. Literally means you decided yourselves to buy a house. And last, de giftet seg i fjor literally means they married themselves last year. Okay, I hope that helped answer your question. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Ha det! Vi ses senere! Bye! See you later!